Hi, everyone, and thank you for tuning in to our weekly financial facts chat. Thank you for joining us. And if you're catching this after the live video has ended, be sure to comment so we know that you're here. I'm Courtney Nagel, the Associate Marketing Manager for the NFCC, and I'm excited to be joined by Bruce. Um, he's our VP of Marketing and in-house credit and money management expert. How are you doing today, Bruce? I'm doing great. How are you, Courtney? I'm good. It's been a week of sickness in my house and everyone's finally better. We've had the flu, some stomach stuff. It's, so it's we are on the up and up and very excited. How's how are you holding up? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's uh, you, you hear about all these people uh, getting the flu and all these other things that are going around. So I'm just trying to uh, wash my hands frequently and uh, yeah. <laughs> stay, uh, stay healthy. I'm keeping up with my exercise routine, uh, doing a little bit uh, to try to, to try to stay in the clear. So the worst I can report is that uh, I've got uh, I cut my thumb, but that's, that's oh, well, that's good. Yeah, I've bought hand sanitizers to keep in like every bag that we carry. So we have like, like when you walk in the house, you use hand sanitizer when you leave the house, you, like in the car. So we're trying to stay well. Yeah, that's uh, that's important. And, and here it's hard to do when you take mass transit because you're on the, you know, right. on the subway, you have to touch the the rail, uh, the, the the railings or the uh, hang on to surfaces uh, when you, uh, and, and I keep, I'm thinking about these things more often and I'm, I don't want to sound like I'm frightened of everything, but it's like when you touch the, <laughs> when you use your debit card or your credit card at the register and you have to touch, you'd use a pen. Uh, yeah. You have to touch those keys. And I had to go to the pharmacy to get a couple of things uh, last night, like shampoo, toothpaste and stuff. I was thinking about it. Oh my gosh, I'm in a pharmacy. People who <laughs> touch this keypad have the flu. So, yeah. So it's, it's hard because kids, they're just germ. It's like you would just need to cover them in hand sanitizer. Like they lick things, they put their fingers in their mouth, mm -hmm. they touch, and anything is like the most gross things to touch. It's like they find it. Yeah. Um, and it's even like, like trying to figure out <laughs> where to take them to the doctor without exposing them to more germs is a whole another thing, too. So it's, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's uh, fun. It's a thing. And then, of course, all of this sickness is costing people. So hopefully uh, yeah. you know, people are budgeting for times when they have to buy over-the-counter medication that's not covered by insurance and things like that. It's pretty mm -hmm. over-the-counter stuff is pretty expensive. Uh, yeah, it is. And it's good. Like our FSAs, HSAs are all kicking in and for the new year. So it's good and bad that you're getting sick right now. Yeah. <laughs> We waited until the new year. Um, yes. But today we had planned to talk a little bit about taxes, but we're going to pivot a little bit today to chat about an announcement FICO made last week and its new scoring model coming this summer. It's the FICO 10 and the FICO 10 T. Um, but to start us off, Bruce, can you give us a little background about the FICO score, what it is, who uses it and how it impacts consumers? Yeah, uh, so the FICO score, it's one of the different credit scoring models that is used widely uh, among lenders. So it's how they uh, it's how they determine your credit health. When a lender is reviewing your application for a loan or a credit card, they use a credit score. FICO is one of uh, several credit scores that are used by, by lenders during this process. And FICO has been around for a while. It's been around for a long time. And it's highly regarded as one of the most widely used credit scoring uh, systems uh, around. So although there are other credit scoring models, uh, if you play the odds, chances are the lender you're working with, they may be likely to use uh, some version of FICO. And then that goes to the other piece about FICO is that the credit score itself has many different versions. And there, it goes all the way back to FICO 2, FICO 1. Not every lender uses the same version, which is going to come up a little bit later in our discussion. But essentially, the primary focus of each scoring model throughout all the different versions is that, of course, timely payments are highly important. Account history is very important. Uh, the uh, debts that you owe, the amount of debt that you owe is also a factor. Uh, and then there are other things that are sprinkled into this uh, 
to this mathematical algorithm that they use to determine this number. And the number in the FICO score ranges from seven, uh, from uh, 300 to 850. And 300 being the bottom end of the scale, which is where you don't want to be. And then 850 being the top of the scale, which is you know the holy grail of, of credit scores. And you want to be there, uh, but you don't yeah. want to be there. 300. What makes the FICO 10 different from the older models? So the yeah, FICO 10 is the latest and greatest. And this is sort of the breaking news element of this whole discussion is that FICO uh, just very recently within the past week uh, has made an announcement that they're coming out with this new FICO 10 uh, scoring model. And it's going to be launched sometime this summer, uh, summer of 2020. And the, I guess the latest and greatest about FICO 10 is that it uh, places a different emphasis on certain aspects of your financial behavior, how you're managing your debt and how you're, uh, how you're taking care of your creditor obligations. And so two things that really stand out here is that they're placing uh, a greater emphasis on the types of debt that you're carrying and uh, they're looking at different types of debt differently in terms of the score and so they're saying that installment types type loans like your uh, student loans or mortgages are going to be looked at differently than uh, revolving credit and revolving credit being one of the forms of debt that people more commonly get in trouble with uh, they fall behind they take on too much of it uh, so yeah that's going to be looked at a little bit differently. The other piece of this that's very interesting is they're also going to place a greater emphasis on, uh, on how you're keeping up with your payment obligations. So even a late payment, say about a year ago, is going to factor a little bit more uh, than it may currently be factoring in your credit score with this new FICO 10 model. So they're also looking at uh, areas where there might be a little bit of a risk indicator in how you're managing your debt. Uh, if you've had a bit of a bumpy road keeping up with payments. Um, and the amount of debt that you're carrying, your debt ratio is also going to be factored in. It's very important as well, uh, more so with FICO 10. So if you're if your debt ratio, if you're carrying way too much debt in relation to your assigned credit limit, uh, that's certainly going to be a red flag uh, in this new FICO scoring system. So greater emphasis is really the key word here. These are things that they already look at uh, in some cases, uh, like paying on time and, and your, your debt ratio, but it's just that there's a greater emphasis being placed on those things. Do you know how they consider personal loans now? Because I know that's a big one that's changing. So... Is it just kind of a smaller portion of the score right now, and it's going to kind of become a bigger? Well, it's uh, it's it's fact. It, I think it's factored evenly as as any of your debts would be. So, if a personal loan, like a signature loan, for example, if you're just taking out a personal loan, uh, that looks it looks the same as a credit card. And it's just all a matter of how you're managing that debt is really the big thing right now. So, if you're making your payments on time, or if you're not, or if you uh, if you borrowed uh, a lot of money for that personal loan and it's much bigger in proportion to your other debts, that might make it factor a little bit more. So those things are in play right now. But the loan type itself, uh, you know, I'd say it'd be factored about the same as, as revolving credit with the current scoring models that they that they okay. have. Yeah. How will the new scoring model affect people who have healthy credit scores? Uh, if you're doing the right thing and you're paying down your debts, uh, you're not taking on uh, more than you can handle. And if your mix of debt is um, is balanced, I would just say it's, it's, it's balanced so that you don't have too much in the category of revolving debt, which would be credit cards, high interest credit cards then I think you're going to be rewarded uh, for doing that maybe a little bit more. You might even see in some cases in those situations, you might even see a bump in your credit score. And you may wonder, well, why did my credit score just go up? Uh, it's probably because you're being rewarded for those uh, positive financial behaviors of keeping your debt levels low, of paying down your debt quickly, not taking on too much revolving debt, having a balanced portfolio. I think those are the things where you're really going to see uh, people who are keeping up with the uh, their payment obligations, making timely payments, keeping those debt levels low, uh, they're going to get, uh, they might get a little bit of an extra bump. Not a lot of a bump, but, you know, maybe a little bit. 
right. the main thing is their situation's not going to get worse. Well, that's good to hear. What about people with poor credit? Like yeah, here's where it gets interesting. So uh, there's a lot of information out there about what is going to what scenarios are going to be worse for people with poor credit if you have a low credit score and let's say you have a credit score of 600 or lower you should probably be concerned right now uh this is where the new scoring model might bring your score down even further than it currently is depending on certain factors uh, and that's important to remember and those factors really relate to some of the things i talked about earlier if your credit score is low because you don't have established credit, if you have a thin file or if you have no credit file uh, and you pull your credit and you see that you have a very low credit score, you don't have as much to worry about because your score is low for reasons other than missing payments or taking on too much uh, uh, debt, a certain category. So the main thing for people in that situation is just to think carefully about how you're building your credit, choose wisely when you're choosing credit products and don't uh, don't try to run up a lot of debt on the available credit lines that you have. And if you pay on time, you know, you're going to be okay. Your credit score will steadily increase. But for people who are in situations where their credit score is low because they've missed payments, especially recently, maybe within the past 12 or 24 months, or if they have a lot of credit card debt and really they don't have any other forms of, of debt that are considered more healthy, uh, by this new scoring model, like student loan debt or like the uh, uh, installment loans that are collateralized, like a mortgage or a car loan, then you probably have to start thinking strategically about what you want to do to get to a better place. And that may involve a few moves uh, over a period of time to uh, scale that situation. Like if you have too many credit cards right now, you may have to think strategically about which ones you want to close, which balances you want to move to which other credit cards uh, to try to bring that under control and to reduce the number of revolving accounts that you have. Um, also, you want to think about the balances that you're carrying. If you have way too much debt compared to your credit limit, if you're running that debt right up to the or close to the credit limit, uh, especially above that very, very important 30% uh, ratio where your balance on your credit card is above 30% of your assigned credit limit, that's where when you're in the danger zone. So you want to bring that debt down. You want to start paying it down very quickly and and try to, try to do it um, in a way that doesn't throw your budget out of whack. Right. Of course, that's where talking to a credit counselor comes in handy because if you feel like you're stuck in that situation, especially if you're making late payments and your debt has, has run up to the credit limit. I mean, that's right. really an emergency and you do need to talk to a nonprofit financial professional to try to work out a plan that, that makes sense. And that's another piece that the T, the score 10 T is going to look at like trended, how much your debt levels or if they're increasing or decreasing or staying consistent. Is that correct? Yeah. And one of the things about that too, and I'm thinking of scenarios that are pretty common for people who like to consolidate their debt and like to try to get their credit card debt off of the high interest credit cards and into a lower interest product. Sometimes people in those situations will get a consolidation loan and they'll move the balances off and it'll be a closed end fixed period uh, installment payment loan to pay off those credit cards. But uh, one of the things that happens commonly in that situation, I know firsthand because I used to, as a credit counselor, I used to talk to people who were in this very situation. Right. They would run those credit cards back up and still have the consolidation loan that they have to deal with. And so some situation like that, as it plays out on a credit report, uh, would definitely uh, have a, a negative impact on somebody's uh, credit score under this new model more significantly than, than before. Yeah. Is there time for those people to make changes that would boost their credit score before FICO 10 goes into effect? Yeah. The good news is uh, all this stuff we talked about sounds like panic. Uh, we're not trying to gin up any fear here, but we are. Uh, I mean, this is a time for people in those situations to think very seriously about getting from where they are to a better place with their credit health. And there is time to do that. So the most important thing that I think I, I would point out in this situation is that even though FICO 10 is going to release sometime this summer, uh, it doesn't mean that every single lender in the world is going to be using this immediately. In fact, if you look at FICO right now and you look at 
uh, which lenders use which version of FICO. Uh, I think the most popular version of FICO in use by lenders right now is eight. So they're actually two, uh, two versions behind in the scoring models, at least from the, the bulk of the lenders who are using FICO. So that's my first point is don't panic because not every lender is going to immediately start using FICO 10 and you're in big trouble. You've got time. Do you and know if, how lenders mm -hmm. pick which one to use or when to change? It's up to each lender. Uh, honestly, they look for certain things, uh, indicators in, in determining risk models. Some lenders even have their own proprietary scoring models, uh, which makes it even more complicated in terms of the, the vast landscape of uh, credit scoring models. So that's why it's important to, when you're talking to your lender and you think about applying for a loan, ask them what scoring model they use and they'll tell you. They should tell you what they use. They'll tell you if they use FICO, they'll tell you if they use Vantage, they'll tell you if they use a modified version of FICO or Vantage or if they use some proprietary system. Uh, but it's good to know going into that situation before you actually apply for a loan or a line of credit so that you know uh, that the score you're looking at when you pull a copy of your credit report you get a score is the one that's going to make the most uh, uh, sense in determining whether or not you're going to qualify with this lender. Uh, but that's so that's one thing I wanted to point it out. Point out. But another thing that I wanted to point out is that uh, not every lender is uh, not every lender is using uh, Mike right now. Uh, so you really, I think you have twelve months uh, at least uh, uh, a twelve month runway to not only make the changes, but to see a significant impact in your credit score over that 12 month period, if you start taking steps now. 12, month is, 12 months is a reasonable amount of time to make an, enough of an impact on your credit score to see a difference, if you're doing the right thing. Um, but if you have a major purchase that you're thinking of making uh, before then, um, it's just good to do a little bit of investigation though, just to see what, what the creditors are gonna be looking at. No. How long do you think it'll take for people to see a difference? And once they're starting to make healthy choices, you said 12 months, but can they see that before then? Yeah. yeah I mean, you can start seeing a difference uh, uh, within six months, really. But I think if you're climbing out of a deeper hole, it takes you longer to get to the top. Right. So if you're at a point where your credit score is well below that 600 threshold, uh, really, if you want to get to where the average is, I mean, you've got to go up at least at least 150 points or more, 160, 170 points. That's, you know, that's a long climb. So it's, it's hard. It, it's, it's difficult to say based on everybody's individual unique circumstances and what's showing up on their credit report, exactly how many points are going to, are going to, how many points they're going to go up over a specific period of time. But right. I think the bigger the impact, the longer it's going to take. And there is no quick and easy solution. And that's another thing I wanted to point out. Some people may be tempted to go to re credit repair uh, companies uh, or, or follow up on some offers to automatically clean up their credit or uh, increase their credit score. Uh, you want to be very careful about those. Not all of them are on the up and up. Uh, many of them, but not all, but many of them are, are outright scams and you have to be careful. Uh, so there are products that you can use right now that are some uh, that are linked in some way to, to the FICO system that can actually help you see an increase in your score. Uh, Ultra FICO is one uh, product that's uh, directly offered by FICO that gives people an opportunity to use uh, non-traditional types of credit, uh, such as their checking or savings account activity to make a difference, a positive difference in their credit score. And then there's Experian Boost, uh, which is another product that has an impact on uh, FICO scores. And that's a free service that's available through Experian. And you can go in and give them permission to look at your uh, automated payments that you make to certain types of non-traditional credit, like your utility bills or your uh, cell phone payment or things like that, rent. Um, and that they can use that activity to uh, increase your credit score based on positive behavior. So that's another service that's free that can have a fairly immediate impact. Well, actually, it would be an immediate impact if you plug into that service uh, on your credit score. 
but it doesn't impact all versions of FICO. And it may not, Im I don't really know if it's going to have any uh, direct impact on FICO 10 yet. Uh, but those are just some ways that you can go about improving your credit score in the short term. But I would say, again, be very cautious of and steer clear of any suspicious um, uh, credit repair offers that you might have out there. Right. And we actually have an older chat that we did with Rod Griffin from Experian on how to avoid scams and credit repair and how to actually fix your credit on your own. Um, so it's a relatively simple process that you can do mostly online. Mm -hmm. um, but for Boost, one of the questions that came to mind, is that good for people who have thin credit files or is it for people who... Yeah, it's for everybody, really. If you have a thin, if you're thin file, it's actually all the better that you uh, go in and you use Boost because it'll have, uh, it can have a very immediate and very positive impact on your, on your credit score. So it is for people who are considered uh, credit invisibles or uh, okay. thin file consumers. Uh, but it, if you have a really good credit score, uh, let's say your credit score is uh, 800, then uh, then you uh, you could actually end up in a situation still benefiting from Experian oh. Boost by going in and plugging in. Uh, so it can increase your credit score there as well. But if you have an 850, you can't go any higher. So congratulations. Uh, that's one scenario where Experian Boost probably <laughs> will not work for you. All right. And you don't really need it to. That's so. true. That's true. <laughs> Well, I think that's it for today, unless you had anything else to add. Um, but next week, we'll be coming back to talk about getting ready for your income taxes. Everyone should have received a W-2 or will be in the next day or so. Um, but thank you for joining us and we'll see you next week.